Hello friends, Tanya here for Trinity Stamps and today we're going to play with some gourds and we're going to put them on a grid. We are going to use the Color Swatch 6x6 stencil set. There are two stencils. There's a circular one and a grid matte one and we're going to use some blue inks here. I show you the colors I use in case you want to completely replicate this card. And I have an eight and a half by five and a half inch piece of cardstock here. So I just took a letter sized piece of hammer mill cardstock. This happens to be 80 pound and cut that in half. And I taped our stencil down with some painter's tape. And since this is a six by six stencil, I will have to move it. But since it is a very geometric and repeated pan, uh, pattern, I can very easily line up our stencil to continue the pattern all the way down the paper. This way you can make whatever size pattern you want. Now this does say it is a color swatching stencil, but you can use it however you want. I mean, you're the creator. Um, I did decide to make a five by seven card again. I know you're all shocked. <laughs> I do love a good five by seven card and any product that can easily be used to create a five by seven card is going to land on my list of favorites. I do think I want to make a uh, card with the color swatch in the circle also. Next, I took some of my Daniel Smith watercolors that are metallic and I chose an antique gold and an antique bronze and I spattered this over our pattern excuse me, our stenciled piece because I wanted to add a little bit of grunge to the card. Next, we're going to pull out my ever favorite modern embossed edged A7 stack and die cut a piece for that from that. And we're going to use the beautiful, gorgeous stamp set. I have all of these gourds laid out on my Misty to fit on a quarter panel of cardstock. This is more hammer mill. I am trying to show you the Copic colors that I end up using, but that's kind of a fail. I'm so sorry. I'm going to zoom in here and show, give you a close up of all of the coloring I'm doing. And I just grabbed a bunch of yellows and oranges and greens, even some yellow greens and blue greens to color in our various gourds and squash, pumpkin, what they all fall in the same uh, category. I love squash, love it. I have been known to go to a farmer's market and come home with six or seven different squash because A, I love how they look and B, I love how they taste. They taste, And there are so many beautiful and delicious varieties out here. The one I'm coloring right now to me would be like a pie pumpkin, which is sweeter and richer than the field pumpkins that you get for jack-o'-lantern creating. The one that I colored first looks like a pat -a pan pumpkin to me, and the one that I haven't colored yet in this grouping looks like a butternut squash. There's ac acorn squash, spaghetti squash, kabocha, delicata, carnival, there are so many different kinds of squash out there and they all have a slightly diff different flavor. Some have a, a drier, more dense quality and others are lighter and fluffier and uh, lighter colored. And if you ever have the chance to get a Hubbard squash, I highly recommend it. They're big and kind of ugly looking. They're a bluey, silvery color with knobbies on them but they have a cinnamon undertone to them. They are just delicious. They're a little hard to come by though. As you can see, I am coloring this one a cream color and these are done with the E30s. I do a lot of mixing of these colors and I just reached and grabbed for different colors I thought would look good. I do try to use three colors per squash to get lots of shading. And these are really small images. They are really easy to color. This last one, oh, it's not a last one. I tried different methods of adding the knobbies on these different 
squash and sometimes I tried to add the color after I colored the body and sometimes I tried to color them before. Just go with it because there's so much variety in the coloring and the evenness of the patterns on these squash and pumpkins. You really can't go wrong. No matter how you do it, these will look fantastic. I cannot believe how easy these are and it actually didn't take me that long to color these maybe 15 15 to 20 minutes maybe um, I sped this up way fast this is four times normal speed and I don't think I cut any of it out this is supposed to have been representing kind of a Hubbard squash but they're they kind of have a hook neck too I believe they they're a big big squash Anyway, I added this last layer of light green, which I thought was going to have more of a blue-green quality to it, but I actually like how this came out. It looks more like the colors of an acorn squash. And we are going to color this one like a delicata or a corn carnival squash. And they have a creamy yellow background with um, streaks of greens and yellows and golds, oranges, and lots of little knobbies. They're so sweet and delicata. That really describes the flavor. It has a delicate flavor. The skin is very thin, so you can slice them and grill them and eat them just as they are. I bet you didn't think you were getting a squash tutorial on this video. I really love squash and I've passed that on to my granddaughter. She ate so many, so many orange vegetables as a infant that her nose actually turned a little bit orange tinged from all the all of the keratin in the food she ate. That kid was eating lemons and Tabasco sauce as a child, as a little, as a little, little. Here we are stamping over our colored images again and I do stamp two or three times to get the most bold and crisp image over the top of that coloring. I really like this method of getting some definition to your colored projects. We have coordinating dies for every single squash and for the sentiment in this stamp set. Speaking of which, we're going to use this um, pale peachy yellow color. It's a very retired Stampin' Up! cardstock. I just happened to pull it out of my bin, my my scraps, my rainbow of scraps, and I am going to stamp it with Versamark ink. Actually, I think this is juicy embossing ink several times to get a nice layer. I think I need to re-ink my ink pad. And then I'm using some gold, or excuse me, I think that's called penny, old penny or just penny embossing powder. It's a very deep, bronzy, metallic, coppery deep. It's a deep, metallic color. I really like how it stands out against the cardstock here. Now I'm going to add a layer of heavyweight cardstock that I die cut from the, with the same dies for each of the squash and for the sentiment. I love that that sentiment has a coordinating die and that it cuts it out so beautifully. I don't need a wide shadow behind it, but I do like to have it die cut. I think adding that extra layer behind each of these elements would help them stand out against this rather busy grid background. I do love a good geometric background. It is very versatile. And if you had images small enough, you could add them to each of those squares. Now my squash weren't quite small enough for that, but they do look fantastic against that panel of blue to light teal um, stenciling and that spattering. It just, oh, I can't tell you how much I love the spatter. We've got all of these lined up and the way they have them lined up on the stamp sheet is pretty awesome. And I didn't change that much. I just switched, uh, I think a couple of them around just to add a little more balance. And I'm going to adhere these down. The grid lines really make this easy. I'm going to start out by aligning my sentiment in the bottom third of the card, letting the grid lines help me keep it straight. And then we're going to take the squash that are going to be in the center all the way up 
and line those centered on that grid line also. Next, I'm going to adhere down the squash on the corners of the card. Again, this is a five by seven card. I took a five by seven white cardstock base and adhered the grid panel to that first. And I had put some scrap cardstock behind that also. I had only used 80 pound cardstock and I wanted something with a little extra weight and a little extra height on our card base. We've got all of our little squash adhered and now I want to add something to the inside. I just cannot do a card without finishing the inside. It's like it's only half done if we don't do the inside. I'm just going to use the same painter's tape that I used to adhere the stencil to the front panel and I need one more piece. That's my big roll of painter's tape and we'll secure that last edge. I thought I'd be able to just use the ink that was left on our ink blender. And have you seen the new ink blenders from the Blending Buddies from Trinity Stamps? I've really loved these. I like ink blending tools, but I prefer my sponges most of the time. But a good brand new ink blending brush, oh, it's heaven. I love these. And I actually like how they rest in your hand. My hand doesn't get tired from all of the ink blending. I do a lot of ink blending. I really enjoy ink blending. And these are not even making it off of my desk anymore. I am a messy crafter, so you saw me looking at my fingertips to make sure I didn't have any ink on them so that I wouldn't transfer them onto this very crisp, and clean and simple inside of the card. Now that wasn't completely centered, but that's okay. We're gonna pull out a stamp set called Beautiful Breeze from last year. It coordinates, by the way, with the shimmering winds foil plate, which is awesome. And we're going to use the autumn greetings from that stamp set. And we're going to stamp it with some distress oxide ink in crackling campfire to carry through the orange feel from the squash. Now this did not stamp as crisply as I might have liked, but that has to do with the ink quality, not the stamp. There are a bunch of new embellishments this month. This one is the Buttercup Vase, and it is some rhinestones in four different um, sizes with a very iridescent quality and some wider facets than some of our other uh, embellishments. I am going to do three groupings of three here with three different sizes of gems in each of those groupings, trying to just add some flow through this pattern. And I think that embellishments, I really, I don't, I think I've made one card in the last month that didn't have some kind of gem or sequin or clay mix on it. They are everywhere in my craft room and why wouldn't I just use them? They do add so much to the card. I'm using my Barely Art Precision Glue here, but Trinity Stamps has a new glue. It is fantastic. It works great. It has a fine tip applicator, but I'm allergic to it, so you won't see me using it. And there it is, my gorgeous beauty. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment so YouTube knows that you want to see more of these videos. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done that yet. And if you're interested in any of the products that I use today, check that description box below. I will have them listed and linked as always. Until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.